Uh, the remainder of our discussion today is all going to be uh, examples and questions. Uh, we're not going to prove anything. We're just going to raise questions that, that I hope will make you think. So the idea of what's called a Markov chain. A Markov chain can be visualized by an example like this. I have a, a collection of rooms, and the rooms have doors. And the idea is that you move from room to room by the following thing, that there's a certain number of doors, and you choose one at random. Uh, and first pass, you can make it equally likely. And then you just walk through the door into the other room. And then you keep this process up. So at every uh, increment, I said once an hour. So once an hour, you you leave the room that you're in and go to uh, an adjoining room by just picking one of the doors at random and, and moving. So what kinds of questions could we ask? All right, so here's one question. If you start in room one, that's the upper left-hand corner, how long do you think that it will take to reach room six? What's the expected waiting time before you get to room six? See, it's not certain. It's not certain. You might move, might move from one to two, two to three, three to five, five to four, four back to one, four to one to two. They might turn right around and go back to one. They might sit there and oscillate back and forth between one and two for a week or two. Unlikely, but you might. Okay. <coughs> So what's the expected time? Now, that's a calculation. I, it, it's not supposed to be obvious if there's anybody in the room who says, oh, it's, it's uh, 3.6 hours. You should be teaching the class, and if you were right, by the way. Yeah. You, could, you could certainly say that, but if you were right, it's a, it's a non-trivial calculation. But it can be made. So a Markov chain is a process that has this, these qualities that there's a finite number of states, rooms, and you move from one room to another room at any given time, and the, probability, the probabilities of how you move are independent of time. You could jazz this up. Uh, for example, in room four, there could be a spinner. And the spinner could say, you hit the spinner, it goes round and round. And if it lands in this, you take door one. If it lands in that, you take door two. Lands in that, take door three. You could even have one of the possibilities that you don't move. You just stay in a room. And so you, you can have different probabilities for different doors and different rules for different rooms. But the spinner for a room has to be fixed in time if it's going to be a Markov chain. You can't get a new spinner when you go back to that same room at a later time. Then it's not a Markov chain. Same thing. How fast does the probability of being in room I converge to the steady state? There's, there should be some steady state thing. You know, you're moving around, you're moving around, moving around. You come back a month later. There's some probability distribution. What's the probability you're in room one? The probability you're in room two? The probability you're in room three, four, five, and six? That depends on the configuration, but it does not depend on where you start. So the kinds of things that probabilists want to know is how fast does it converge to the steady state uniform? Now, let me give you an example to illustrate fast and slow. Entirely intuitive. Suppose you have a cycle, a big cycle, a CN. And now my Markov process is you start on a vertex, any vertex, flip a coin. If it's heads, you move clockwise. If it's tails, you move counterclockwise one step. 
All right, you start here, and I go away and come back in a week. What's the steady state distribution? You are equally likely to be anywhere. You've got a, if they're n vertices, you've got a 1 over n chance of being there, 1 over n a chance there, 1 over n. Okay, actually, it's not exactly 1 over n, very, very close to it. You're more likely to be here than here by a little bit. But it's converging to a uniform distribution where you're equally likely to be 1 over n. Now, let's change the graph. Let's make the graph the complete graph. Put in all the edges. Turn it into a Kn. And now, here's the rule for the Markov chain. When you're sitting on a vertex, you see n minus 1 other ones. And you flip a coin with n minus 1 sides, roll a dice with n minus 1 choices, hit a spinner with n minus 1 sectors, and go with equal probability to a random other vertex. What's the steady state distribution? the same. You are equally likely to be anywhere, regardless of where you start. Now, which of those two processes converges to the steady state distribution faster, the cycle or the complete graph? The complete graph. You got more ways to get over there. You know, in the cycle, if, this, if n is a billion, it takes you at least a billion over two steps to get here. In a complete graph, you can get there with one step. And so your intuition can be verified by a mathematical calculation. The complete graph mixes much faster. 